Hello and welcome everyone. Sorry, we're just a few minutes late. We're just two minutes late. Good evening. See everyone. everyone. Yeah, joining. So we'll wait until our participant ca um, counter stops rising. So we're at 18. It's just how Zoom lets you in. Okay, great. Thanks everyone for joining. I know it's, it's a nice sunny evening. Okay. We're at 23. I'll just share my screen and get everything ready. And just let you know, guys, in case you have any questions or anything like this, we will have some time later on during the, the webinar to answer questions. But we have a Q&A part on Zoom that you have access on your screen as well. Don't hesitate to pop in any questions along the way. And Joanne and myself will do our best to answer your questions. OK, let's check the figures. We're at 24, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. This is recorded. Um, and will be available to view back. So welcome to anyone watching it back. This is ACR application um, with, the, with the three of us, if I can get to my next slide. So, ah, so my name's Una McMenamin. I'm the student recruitment manager here. I've been emailing you all, hopefully, about your applications. You would have had a few emails and invites from me, um, and I'm the person who is reviewing um, applications on our side. So I have lots of tips on the technical aspect of that. Um, next up, we have Joanne Corley. So Joanne, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. Um, can't see you, I'm afraid, which is unfortunate, but uh, hopefully we'll meet you at, at one of uh, the orientation meetings when you all sign up and come on board. Um, I'm the program coordinator for climate entrepreneurship and for workplace wellness. Um, and I've worked on, on the other programs as well uh, uh, as program coordinator. So just helping you along the journey uh, as you as you do the course. Brilliant. And then we have Jan. So Jan, do you want to introduce yourself? Good evening, everyone. So yeah, my name is Jan, and I'm a little bit like Joanne. I'm a coordinator as well, but I work on the Creative and Cultural Entrepreneurship Program. I have a little bit less experience than Joanne, but I'll do my best to help you as best as possible during your journey with us. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. Brilliant. Thank you, Jan. So the way we're going to work this event, we have 45 minutes. Um, it's broken into two parts. We're going to do a deep dive on eligibility and what that looks like. And... Um, what Springboard are looking for in their eligibility requirements, as well as what Trinity Tangent looks for in our eligibility requirements to the course. Uh, there will be a pause then for questions, and then we'll jump straight into a demo of the Springboard application through springboardcourses.ie. And then again, we'll stop for questions after that. So Jeanne is going to be monitoring the Q&A, and hopefully we can keep up with that, and we'll just jump straight in. So the big question is, are you eligible? Um, and the two main eligibility requirements um, that Springboard ask for when um, considering applicants, um, they're looking for being a, a, applicants being a full-time and a resident of Republic of Ireland and having their own PPS number. And when I say Springboard, I'm aware maybe not everyone uh, knows this, but we host the course Springboard, our the third party funder of these courses. So they're for lots of different types of people. So we mentioned Springboard a lot because that's the platform and the host and the funder for these courses. But the course is run by Trinity Tangent. So there's your two main um, eligibility requirements. Then you do have to meet the nationality and visa requirement. So again, um, uh, another simple one, if you're an EU, EEA, UK, Swiss, Swiss na national, you're fine. Um, and then anyone who has one of the international stamped visas. So a stamp four visa, very common visa, stamp four EU fam, stamp five, stamp six, or if you're on an Irish residence permit, permit card. So that's really what they're looking for, it's it's back to that first um, requirement of being a, a being a resident in Ireland. 
So um, also, you have to have lived in the EU, the EEA, the UK, Switzerland, for or Switzerland, sorry, for at least three out of the last five years. Now, this can um, trip up um, a good amount of people who consider themselves residents in, in passport holders of Ireland, but maybe they've been away in, in Australia or maybe they've been out of the country in America, and um, that would um, disqualify you for uh, these courses. So you'd have to wait for your three years. And we do have a number of applicants who realize this and then they say, well, we'll, we'll apply, I'll apply next year when I have my three years or the year after. So that's just down to having your proof of that, which is your citizenship. So uh, there's also, um, we also have an allowance for refugees, subsidiary protection status in Ireland. And then if you're in receipt of a DSP payment, that's a department social protection payment. And there's many of those, um, including pensions, um, the the uh, the nationality and visa requirements um don't uh, they don't they aren't accounted for in your application because we take the DSB payment that you have um already met those right criteria and I will show you that when I go through the demo for the springboard courses what it looks like um you'll you won't have to fill in that nationality if you are going through a DSB payment. So it's down to us to make sure that you have all of those uh, proof and requirements. So you will get emails from me if you do send in an application. We're not out. We, we want people to be successful in their applications. So I know maybe a couple of people on this call may have had an email from me today if they were missing um, any of that evidence. And we'll continue to do that. And if you have any questions, you can, of course, email us as well. Then there's another requirement. This is the requirement on the side of Trinity and what we're asking for. We're asking that you have completed a level eight degree and that's um, a Bachelor of Honours. Um, so you've got um, a normal degree or an ordinary degree at level seven. You've got a BA Honours at level eight. So it's a, that's how it is graded in Ireland. But of course, we've got many people who've got foreign qualifications. And all you simply need to do is log on to NARIC. So take note of that and you will have this presentation afterwards. It's a site which will give you the equivalent grading um, your country to or the country where you um, got your qualification and it will tell you what level it's at. So it's simple in Ireland, it's level five, six, seven, eight. And the course you're applying for is a level nine. And if of course you have a level nine, you can apply for a level nine. That's absolutely fine as well. There is, a, there is the RPL policy. So that's the recognized prior learning policy in case you do not have a level eight. Um, and that's, it can be found on our website and I'm happy to answer questions on that also. Uh, but for the most part, people will be applying with that academic level. And then when you're applying, you also need to apply on the basis of being one of these four types of applicants. So that's employed, unemployed, a returner. And that a returner really means someone who's returning back into the workforce after being a homemaker. Maybe you have had caring duties. Um, in the last nine to 12 months. And there's a form to uh, prove that. And then also recent graduates. So that's if you have completed your studies in 2022 or 2023, that makes you a recent graduate. And that just comes down to how springboard grade you as an applicant. So it's important that you self-label yourself correctly. Unemployed actually um, covers a large amount of applicants and um, we had some we had this session earlier and there were some people asking about if they're on a pension pension actually falls under unemployed um some people who work part-time who are on a dsp payment that falls under unemployed it's not a label it's just how they grade you so just to be aware them to make sure that you're applying and um, the right a uh, uh, section to your own application so that's it on your eligibility requirements. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, there's a question there, Una, um, from and uh, Mantfo. Sorry if I pronounce the name wrong. I'm an asylum seeker. Nine months. Do I qualify? 
Yeah, so you may still qualify um, if you have a DSP payment or you're receiving funding. Um, it's very individual asylum seekers. There's, it's not very generalized. Um, so what I would uh, recommend is that you get that proof of whatever, if you are on some form of payment, um, to send it to us and we can review and let you know um, if it if it does fit. But there, you will ha probably have, if we go back to the eligibility requirements, um, there is residency, it's called subsidiary protection, which is being here on the basis of a refugee family. Um, so that does fall under um, uh, eligibility. So I, it's just really down to what you have. So it's one or the other, the payment, try, try and see if you have a proof of payment or then proof of residency and just let us know and we'll, we'll help you with that and, and, and see if we can get you through on that. Any other questions? I'm just going to allow uh, Andrew for you to jump in here. And if you want to unmute yourself, we can listen to your, your question. If you have a question, you can see your hand is raised there. Oh. For anyone who missed that, we're trying to hear if someone wants to ask a question. Yeah. Jean has also put in some really helpful um, links. So there's a link there to Narek. Well, Anne is sorting her question. Aideen White has asked um, on sick leave for cancer treatment, uh, do I qualify as employed or unemplo unemployed? I'm still okay. on contract. I'm still on contract. So the uh, uh, good point here is you need to be, if you're going to be whatever status you deem yourself, you need to be that status in September, two weeks before the course starts. So if you think you're going to be back at work in September, then you should grade yourself as employed. But also it depends on if you're getting a DSP payment. So yes, you might still be on contract, but are you getting any payments from the Department of Social Protection? And if you are, then you could grade yourself as un it, it, unemployed. It depends on where you're being funded from. And it really doesn't affect your, uh, your application too much. It comes down to the fee you have to pay, which is a very small fee for a postgraduate a course. The fees are between about 280 and 320, just depend, they, they just vary very slightly by a few euro. Um, so it's really, and if you were on a DSP payment, you'd have to supply us with extra evidence of that. So we'll be asking for um, the receipt of that DSP payment before September. So two weeks before September, before you start the cor course to make sure that you're still on it. So I hope that answers your question, Aideen. Um, you've got kind of two avenues. And Aaron Coleman uh, has, can you expand on the scoring from Springboard? Scoring? I think that's the scoring from us, really, isn't it? Like, uh, it's, th th that's what uh, Aaron is referring to. Yeah, um, it's, it's, um, it's on a scale. It's really depending on, it's dependent on the cohort. So you're only as good as the, your fellow applicants. If you get a lot of, if we get a lot of really great applicants who have great academic references, they'll score higher, but it's a scale. So if, you're, if they're all on par with you, you'll be high on the scale. If, if not, um, uh, you're just further down the scale. So I can't really enlighten you other than just have a really good academic, but we'll get into the actual references that you need. But if you just make sure that your documents are are really strong, you know, on headed paper, um, you make a good statement of interest, or, um, it, it'll just help you. Um, but there's no, I couldn't say, this is what you have to do to get an absolutely perfect um, application. I hope that answers your question. And there's another question there, is that the first part of the application via Springboard is a higher diploma. So that would be if once it's level eight. Level eight. It depends on what level your higher diploma is, Ursula. You can always ring your academic registry for wherever you got your diploma from and ask, but also look at it, look at your transcript, look at your um, parchment. It should say 
what your level, your higher diploma is at. Again, if you have questions, you can always send them to our inbox. I'll have the email at the end of this um, session. So I hope that answers your question, Ursula. We have one time. Thanks, uh, Ursula. We have one more person with their hands up, if that's okay with you, Aaron Coleman. We're just going to let you unmute your microphone if you're ready to ask your question. If you are available now, Aaron. Brilliant, Sorry. thank you. Oh. That was me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Right Sorry, no, I, that was the, the expand on the um, scoring that was in relation to the the different cohorts i just wasn't sure if if um say for example someone who's in unemployment versus somebody who's in employment would would rank higher <clears throat> for for the thing board yeah good question no we don't because we actually have a certain amount of places to allocate two people on dsp um uh, payments so it, 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 it wouldn't score against you if there was 100 candidates who weren't on DSP payments and then we had to you're just treated the same um it's not something that we really consider at all and um, the only thing that is considered is getting the proof of it when it gets closer to the time and that's not us that's springboard it's just something springboard need Aaron and um, so it's 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 really just not it doesn't even really register when we're we're reviewing the applications if that makes okay. sense it doesn't it doesn't but it's not going to it's not going to count against you yeah great and i'm sorry one last while i while i have you is uh, just when it comes to um the amount of applications i know this is like the i think it's the third year running um do you generally get a, a, like a, a large volume i think i was at the at the talk um, I think it was two weeks ago. There was ago. a lot of people. Yeah, there was a lot of people. So is it, is it, I know there's 76 places or something like that. Is that for both the night and the day um, slots? Yeah, so it's it's 76 places across daytime and evening. Um, it's hard for us to say, we don't have a crystal ball, how many applications we'll get, but we've certainly had a lot of interest. You know that we had, um, I think there was over, there was over 50 people at our open day workplace wellness um, talk. I can see we've had a lot of views, but at the same time, I can't tell you how many applications we had. I can tell you there's uh, still spaces, of course. We haven't offered any spaces yet. So um, all I can say is get your application in. It doesn't really matter if you're, if you're eligible and you have a strong application, you should, with 76 places, you should get... Um, Last no, year, there was, just to let them know, last year it was very oversubscribed and it does yeah. come on a rolling basis. So the sooner you get your application, that's in, the, the better. Yeah, exactly. You know, so like do get it in as soon as possible. And the closing date is the 4th of July. So that's next Tuesday. So if you could get it in before the weekend, because we're going to have a rush at the weekend, yeah. that would be a top tip. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody Thanks seems to submit at the very last minute. Human nature, yeah. isn't it? We all we're all the same. And it doesn't go in your favor in this course because it's yeah, yeah. It's, it's so oversubscribed. It's oversubscribed, yeah. It's it, it's so best everybody get their their um applications in as soon as possible. Thanks. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Joanne. Um, we have a few more hands up. Una, do you want to keep going with the presentation first because you might answer a few questions and then we open the floor again? What would you prefer? We okay, we I'll answer one more. How do I prove that uh, I'm a homemaker, stay-at-home mom? Would provision of PPS number be sufficient? E there's a returners form. Um, I, maybe Jeanne can find it, uh, but I can also find it afterwards. It's on the Springboard website in the FAQs. Um, and it's for underneath the uh, FAQs eligibility, and then you'll see returners, and it's a it's it's a form you just have to fill out. So that's all we need. It's very easy to um, prove that. And then just quickly, uh, it's been thirty two years since my last post grad. I can't imagine where I'd get an academic reference from. Um, does making a degree of a living uh, at my creative field all these years have fantastic testimonies count as equivalent? Yes. Look. Um, um, academic references, everyone thinks it has to be their undergrad, it doesn't have to be their undergrad. 
preferably it would be great if it was, but you might have peers, academics, people you work with, even customers who are in academia. Maybe you've done some continual professional development that um, you've had a course provider who's taught you something they all could be academic references. At the same time, if you can't get one of those, you can also get, submit two professional academic or two professional references, but I would not recommend it because you think of that scoring, you'll be below everyone with an academic reference and a professional reference. But at the same time, we do we have had people join our courses that have submitted two professional references. So um, that's all I can say on that. Um, I, I, you, you'd be surprised you, you, if you really think about it. There are people that maybe even customers, someone who knows you and can recommend you um, can just help. Right, I'm going to have to stop these and we'll jump back uh, to questions and we'll jump into our demo if that's okay. And I think there's a question in there that Jean might be able to answer anyway um, in text form. Now, let's go or not, live demo. Okay, so I'm jumping straight into, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna jump straight into the Springboard site. It should let me. Okay. For some reason, my computer now is deciding it's not too happy, but that's... That's the way it goes, always. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. Very nice. Yeah, you're up now. We can all see it. Okay, great. So um, everything that I just ran through there is also on the Springboard site if you want to review it. So this is springboardcourses.ie. They're the third party site that um, is used by all Springboard course providers in Ireland. Um, and it's where you make your application. So you can log into the site. And if anyone has done a... A springboard course before they will have um, a profile with them so if I want to log in there I am and I'm logged in all I do is go back to search courses go to providers and I can search courses in many different ways but for this purpose I'm just going to search Trinity College Dublin search and then you see all of our courses and I'm going to apply for Certificate in Creative Cultural Entrepreneurship. So if I select apply now, it brings me to a self-declaration form. And this is where what we were talking about in the first part of this presentation, where I'm self-declaring myself as employed, unemployed, self-employed actually is another um, option, a returner or a recent graduate. Um, the reason why we just don't go into self-employed is it's, it's pretty much the same as employed. So it just depends on what proof you have to show. So it's one K A Y E and not. So for this per for this example, I'm just going to say I'm employed, and I will show you what it looks like for unemployed as well. So it's asking me, am I living full time in Ireland? Yes. Do I have a PPSN number? Yes. Do I meet the nationality visa requirements? So we've been through these, and say the person who um, had a question about being a refugee. Um, you are self-identifying at this point, so you can say yes, but you are signing a contract uh, below that's saying you know that this is correct. And then also, have you lived in the EU, EEA and the UK in Switzer or, or Switzerland the last three out of the last five years? And then that's pretty much it. You're say it, it, it's a self-declaration, so we're reliant on you to declare yourself correct. So if you're happy, and you have reviewed all of those documents, you can proceed to application. And this is where we'll ask you for the proof. So now that you're in, now's your time to prove. So we look for a number of documents and we haven't spoken about these yet. So what we wanna see is a curriculum VT. So if it comes down to a few places that we can say this person has relevant experience, and maybe um, for that person who has two professional um, references and their CV is very good and very strong, um, that will help. A statement of interest. So that's really um, 300 words, maximum PDF, about why you think you'd be a good fit for the course you're applying for. Um, very important. Again, please put these on Word document, PDF, 
make them look um, like great documents if we were to print them out. Uh, we've had people take screenshots of WhatsApp messages and notes and I'm trying to think of when I saw, like I saw a WhatsApp message for one of these, for a reference. So all of these should really be documents and you should really be saving them as PDFs. Um, and they are on file for you as well. <laughs> so um, that's important. Now we get into these references, which I know I've brought up before, but now we're actually talking about them. So we need two references, an academic and a professional. And what we're looking for is someone who knows you in the like as a, as an individual, as a person, and they can recommend your suitability for the course. So it's really, really important that um, you know the person that's giving you the reference and it will 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 be familiar with what a reference looks like academics or lecturers or anyone in that field would be very used to writing references so they shouldn't have a problem then we want to see your degree certificate so that's your parchment i thought i saw a question about latin actually earlier it should really be in english um if you achieved your undergrad in ireland but some institutions do provide Latin parchments. Um, if that's the case, you can have it transcribed or we can also use your uh, transcripts as well. So um, it depends on what you were given by your institution. So do look those up. And then I did mention the NARIC. So if you have a foreign um, qualification, uh, you need to also input a NARIC form here and the NARIC form will um, just be downloadable from the NARIC website. And then we need your proof of eligibility. So depending on your status, um, so that's, that's going to be uh, bills, redacted bank forms, birth certs, um, passport. It's, it's all of those um, documents. So I'm going, did I get down to the bottom? Ooh, reference two, and then your other reference, whether it be professional or another academic, it's really up to you. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like to upload these documents because, oh, that's weird. I had there. So in my CV section, well, I'll just, did I put a CV? I might have deleted it earlier. So just to upload your documents like this, I'm uploading the wrong document to the wrong place, but do make sure you upload the right document to the right place. So upload document, curriculum VT, it should be your curriculum VT, your statement, choose file, should be your statement of interest. Now you'll notice you can only upload one file at a time. So if I try and upload another document here, it won't let me. Now you should only have one statement of interest interest but when you get down to your proof you might have more than one document to support and again with your degree you might have a number so you might have in your degree you might have your NARIC and your degree transcript what Springboard wants you to do is zip that folder so you can upload multiple files so what that looks like on um a Microsoft computer, not necessarily a Mac. So it's a little different, but again, you can Google how to zip a file on your computer type. You simply, what I would do is create a little folder like this. So all you do is right click. Bet you now I can't see it. <laughs> Insert folder, new folder, add a folder. You have the zip folder there that you created earlier. I know. I'm just trying to make a new folder to show people, but um, it's in there. I tr trust me. New folder, of course. And well, I'll call it zip it. example. Okay. And then if I want to put two files in it, I can just simply select them. Like, why isn't it letting me select multiple? There. No control all it won't work either so normally you copy it zip example paste it and then we'll paste another file in there so uh, hopefully this isn't too confusing copy zip example so now that i have my multiple documents i right click on the folder that i want to zip 
and then I select send to, compress zip folder, I give it a name, and there it is. And now you should be able to upload that zip. And you can see the file type.zip. So that's how you upload multiple files. It does actually give you an example here as well. It has to be under 20 megabytes. And then for your proof of eligibility, you'll have lots of different documents. So you'll probably have to zip for that as well. Now I'm uploading all of my different documents. And really, the application shouldn't let you get by this part without uploading all, all of those documents. And then what we do on our side is review. And like I said, I will be in contact with people who are missing a document or who um, have uploaded something incorrectly. I think we had someone upload a selfie instead of their reference. So there's mistakes are made and we understand that. So we will, um, we will let you know. And then, so simply I can see how my application is going. So I can see of my first name, last name, so that all went into my profile. We skipped that and you'll find all of that information in your general tab. And they're simply questions. They're very straightforward, gender, PPS, nationality, phone number. I'm not showing you because actually I'm a graduate of this course. Well, I'm a graduate of post-grad enterprise and innovation and innovation and enterprise. And it's got all of my private information. So I'm not going to share it. Not tonight. And then I'll make sure that I have selected the two um, areas that it's asking for. So it's asking me, how did I hear about um, ICT? And it's asking me for duration of residency. So now that I've done that. You're not sharing anymore. I know, I can't oh, because oh. it's my, my personal oh, information. That. All right, okay. <laughs> so hold on. Um, and there's actually no way we, you, you yep. Yeah. Let's share again. There you go. So you should see my screen now. So now you can see I have filled in um, everything. It's just, it's their literally drop down selection in the general. It's, it's very, very straightforward. The good thing about Springboard is you can save your application. Um, so if you haven't got all of your documents, you can start the application, see how far you get. And if you've got a number of red areas, then you know you have to come back and finish it. Or you can select apply for the course. So I'm going to apply. Please ensure the information is correct. I select OK. And that's it. I can see that my application now is in the application section of my profile. This is my profile here. And I know I have one application. If you get an email from uh, me or the team asking for you to review something in your application, you can just simply go back in and you can just uh, submit it. You can just upload required documents and it will it will ask you. It will it will give you back access to your application. So that's it on the application front. We well, have I 10 just... minutes. I just thought it's a question. Um, yeah, Joanne. It, it would be good um, if I think when if people when you're uploading your files to put your surname and your first initial. So if it's your CV, say I would put Corley comma J dash CV and then Corley comma J stash statement of interest, maybe S O I, so that yeah. you're you've attached to each thing and for your reference ref one. So your your last name and your first initial is is a good idea. Brilliant. That's a brilliant tip makes it really easy for us when we're reviewing your application if the files have your name basically so that's a that's a great um top tip joanne um so we'll if go straight okay, over the questions we might just start with ursula because she had a hand raised early on and we didn't have a chance to ask her to 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 unmute yourself is that okay with you Una? yes let's go brilliant ursula. okay ursula just opening the floor to you if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question You just need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just in relation to the reference parts, <clears throat> in relation to the academic reference, if it is a period of time from you have qualified in a related field, um, can you ask somebody else in an academic position that you have studied with since that? For example, my HDIP would be in a different field 
Um, it's 20 plus years from where I have qualified in it, but I have done some add-on courses recently. Can I, can yeah. I ask an ap academic reference from that person? Or would I be safer with two professional references in my current role? No, I definitely that recent. Did you say it was a H dip? dip? Um, I, it was a higher diploma. It was the qualification at the time. Um, there was no degree course at that time. Of course, of yes. That would be per years plus. And this would be, uh, I suppose, uh, recognised learning rather than I suppose um, oh for an RPL application that would be perfect an academic reference is higher than a professional so it doesn't have to necessarily be your undergrad or sorry in your example the more of those okay. that you have the better that 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 will really aid your application absolutely okay that's perfect thank you that's very much do, for that yeah. thank you right what's next You have a few more there. Uh, we can start with Maeve. I have an application in for a while. If I haven't heard from you, is it safe to assume that all is in order with my application? Um, Maeve, I actually, because you've got such a beautiful name, I know your application. All is in order with your application. So um, you will hear from me in the next week um, for sure. Um, would preference be given to those? Yep. So, all is in order. And in, in the next few days and the next week or so, when, as we close for workplace wellness, just because it's closed and you haven't received um, an offer, that does not mean that you haven't been given an offer. So um, don't, yeah, it will be in contact. So as the academic year has closed, it will be difficult to get the references. Is there any other way other than a written document? Um, oh, I, it's a hard one to answer. You could do two professional references in that instance. Um, I'd say if you, you know, if you, if you re reach out to people by email and maybe even um, help them with the reference, you know, if, if that might be a good idea is to kind of write something for them or, you know, give them an example so that make it as easy as possible for the person to give you that reference. Yeah, um, I I know that some people contact um, lecturers via LinkedIn, and that yeah. that works out really well. Um, and make it easy for them. Explain to them I want to do this course because it would be really good for blah blah blah, so that they can put it into the reference and have it tailored, you know, for the course. Yeah. So do it for them and kind of. I hope way. that answers your question. What happens if you get employment before the course starts? Can you still do the course for free? Um, no, actually, um, we'd have to change that self de de declaration over to employed. You would have to let us know, um, and it's it's not a huge problem. I know it, it's 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 two hundred or three hundred, um, but that's just the reality of the funding. It's really out of our hands. It's a, we, we and it's 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 not something that we have control of. But you couldn't take on the course under a false pretense so um we would be we would ask you anyway in the in the two weeks prior to starting the course for receipts of those payments so you, if you want if you don't have them then that's when it gets difficult so you it would be better if you just let us know and we can change your status and then there would be a billing involved I'm afraid, yeah. And, and Springboard yeah. just recently changed, just to, to let them know, Springboard, it used to be that all the um, the documents were uploaded in one go at the very beginning, but now it's done in stages because Springboard want to ensure that if somebody is now employed, they realise some people who weren't employed became employed. So they they actually prevent that from happening, you know, by making people upload their dough slips two weeks before uh, yeah. our employment slip so that's they actually put that in there as a foolproof way to ensure people who are working when they start the course are actually paying for the course yeah I hope that answers your question FYI there on that. <laughs> thanks Joanne that's it's really good insight as well um, and it can be very busy for us getting those receipts um, in the two weeks before the course yeah. 
So if that does happen and you are given a place, we really appreciate your time um, when you do upload them on time. What level of academia should the referee should have come from? Um, we're not really going to consider their level of academia. It's really, if it, I suppose an academic is considered someone who, who works for a third or higher level institution. Um, but also people who provide courses. I know in the creative and cultural arts, um, there's many course providers um, that have 20, 30 years experience. So um, I don't know, Joanne, do you have any? No, we haven't been asked that before. Uh, yeah. We probably have at some stage, but I, I would imagine, you know, anybody who's lecturing would, would generally have a degree. So whoever is lecturing you, you know. We're not gonna go and shake. Yeah, yeah, we're not gonna check. It, is, so don't <laughs> worry about that. <laughs> it it's actually more important the head the headed paper. The headed paper. Um, That's the reason for the headed paper as well. Yeah, people could like people. I know. It's, I know it's it is frustrating for people having to get a headed paper, but anybody can type something up on a on a regular piece of paper. That's the problem. <laughs> Norman, I hope that answers your question. Vaughn, what time are we at? So we have one minute, but we'll keep going. Start to ask again, if I have a strong 30 year old reference from an undergrad degree, should I supply that? Um, it's just the references are meant to uh, recommend you for this course. So if it's 30 years old, it's unlikely, but you can send it to us and we can have a look. It's, it, 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 it's, it wouldn't be a very strong reference if it's that old, I don't think. You're better um, off using two professional references or recent references yeah. of people who actually know you to apply for the course and Far refer stronger. you for that course will work better to professional instead of an academic. And I think exactly. that answers Martin's question as well. Martin, as long as you have two references, even if you can't get an academic one, get two professional ones and the, the value is the same for us because that, that's what Springboard asks for, either academic or professional. If you can't get academic, we'll consider it to professional as long as they have the paper and the information for the person, no worries at all for that. And we have a lot of students who haven't been in education for a while, so don't be worried about that at all. Yeah. You could also no. just, uh, as, as Uda showed you how to zip, you could zip and throw the academic one in, uh, you know, the old academic one in just to show you have an academic, you know, reference or, you know, from previously, along with your two other profiles, just making your your application as strong as possible just in case mm. we're very uh, oversubscribed for courses and just to say out of all of trinity um postgrads we are the only providers that allow for just that would actually allow you to do a postgrad with two professionals because we are we support continuous education and that the, 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 we do allow for two professional. I'm just saying having an academic scores higher uh, and, and I'm, uh, I've am i said a, a number of times that it doesn't have to be your undergrad. It can be someone who knows you in a professional capacity, is in academia. Maybe you've done a course recently. There's, it's, it's, it's certainly not skewed to the younger generation. No. Um, no. Uh, and, and we are the only people that allow we are the only team that allows our postgrads, which even one academic reference is below minimum for Trinity. It's usually two academic references for a postgrad. So um, we we definitely have a look at our social media, lot. and you will Pardon see that. Our students, I was saying, just look at have a look at our social media, and you will see that our students are not old in the twenties. Far from that. No, no very, far very from it. They're generally older. They're so generally are. <laughs> yeah, we take everybody that wants to do it. <laughs> We'll move on to Yvonne, another last minute brainwave. Um, read the academic reference question. What about references from serious academics who have taken the creative writing courses I teach? Yeah, if, uh, it get, it's so hard to say, but if, on, if they're willing to give you an academic reference on, um, on that basis and say it clearly that you attended one of your co courses, I'll certainly read that and think that is an unusual academic reference, but it still fits the bill if it's on a headed paper from someone um, uh, who who knows you in that capacity and can is happy to give you a reference in that format. Yeah, it, I, again, is better, I can't say yes or no, and and places 
I can't guarantee places, but um, it does sound like a, if, 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 if you know someone in that, in that way, that, that could work. I do think so. Any allowance given for COVID? Any allowance? If you, if, if you get COVID during the course, you, like that falls under sickness now, really. Um, um, an allowance for um, attendance, is it? Probably need a clarifying question. I know Jeanne and jo Joanne might be familiar with people who have attended our course who have extenuating circumstances, and certainly any sickness can fall under that. So we do have um, support for that. Yeah, I don't quite understand the question. Sorry, any allowance yeah. for COVID? If you could, um, yeah, expand on that question. I don't, don't quite understand. Yeah, the, uh, the letter of motivation, that's a good question in the end. What weighting does the letter of motivation get, have compared to references? It's important. Yeah, so um, I just want to be really clear on the wording I'm using around weighting. Um, it's a letter, a really good letter of motivation certainly makes for a strong application. And we have people coming from amazing backgrounds um, for example, if you were at the workplace wellness um, open day session, we had our ex, um, we had an alum who's just finished, who is um, leading workplace wellness in the ESB, but and had an amazing background from his life and from his work that made him an excellent candidate. And he came in on um, prior learning. He didn't have a level eight. He didn't have academic references. He had professional references. So in his scenario, that letter of motivation and his experience made him a perfect candidate for the course. And again, this is a, a, a is a gentleman who 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 hadn't done any courses in his, his previous experience, but had shown through that professional experience. And now we use him as a brilliant alumni and he's so proud to talk about his course and what he's doing in the ESB. So um, yes, you're, I, I couldn't compare them, but it, it, that's an example that should let you know that if you've got that really good background piece. And that just should hopefully also color a previous question, which I can see we had a lot of back and forth over on the references. If I did say it scores better to have academic, you know, we have so many people who join our courses on prior learning who don't even have level eights. We consider all applicants. So um, just want to be really clear on that. Um, is the 300 limit strict? It is and it isn't. We want to see your um, we want to see it on one page. I'm certainly not going to be counting, but I don't want war and peace. <laughs> so we don't want a really long reference. Um, 300, just because it's succinct and you should be able to um, get your um, get your point across in about in and about 300. But if it's 301, it's not going to be a problem. Um, are people taking this course considered students for the purpose of student ID? meaning would you be able to apply for one if taking this course absolutely i had a student id i got my money off at mcdonald's um when i did this course so yeah lovely and you also get an individual graduation at trinity as well so you get your day out you are a full student of trinity and you're considered one and then you will be a trinity alumni and you get the benefits of that also so yeah so brilliant, thank you. I think that's all the time we have. We've gone way over. Dreams do come true, thank you. So if that's all, we are going to wrap up. Um, any other questions? I have the email address on screen now, take note. Email us if you're applying for workplace wellness, let's try and get those applications in before the weekend. And that's it, that's all from us. And Jan and Joanne, if you wanna say goodbye. Bye. And as I say, do apply, do come on, uh, come into Tangent. Uh, it's They're great courses and the feedback from students is always, you see it, people really, their minds really open. They come away with a different way of thinking. And yeah, so we would just say, sign up. We're dying to meet you. Thanks. 100% agree. Thank you so much. And we can't wait to get the chance to meet you in September.
hopefully all of you. And I'm just putting back the closing date here in the chat box. So you are all aware closing date for WordPress wellness is on the 4th of July. It's going to come really, really soon. And then climate and creative and culture on the 8th of August, which will come really fast as well. So make sure you get your, your application in as soon as possible. And thank you so much, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you all. Have bye. a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.